My boss stole my Super Bowl tickets, so I made him lose a major client. With the NFL playoffs back on, I thought you all might enjoy this football-related revenge story. I'm a huge 49ers fan the rabbit all-day tailgate in the parking lot type. A few years ago, we made it back to the Super Bowl. I was working at a consulting firm with a handful of accounts I would interact with directly. One client in particular knew how big of a Niners fan I was. I was the day-to-day -day lead on his account. He really liked working with me and we became friends, often grabbing drinks or dinner after our meetings. He had access to a pair of extra company seats to the game and as a thank you, wanted to give them to me as a gift. He passed the tickets over to the partner on that account, who I will refer to as Dickhead Partner. To be given to me as a surprise, the game came and went. We lost. It sucked. The next time we met, we went to drinks afterward and he mentioned, Hey, by the way, why didn't you go to the game? I heard someone else was in your seats. I asked what game. He said the Super Bowl. Confused. I answered I didn't have seats to the Super Bowl. He told me that he gave Dickhead Partner a pair of his company tickets for me as a gift so I could attend. I had zero idea what he was talking about. He looked shocked, told me to quietly ask around about it and get back to him. When I was back in the office the next week, I found out through one of the secretaries that Dickhead Partner had given a pair of Super Bowl tickets to another one of his clients as a gift from our company. I might have let this sort of thing go to keep the peace under different circumstances. But these were seats on the 30-yard line to see the fucking 49ers play in the Super Bowl. I was pissed. I considered confronting Dick Headpartner myself, but realized it was the client who had noticed I wasn't there in the first place. So if I let him handle it, there would be no blowback on me. So I texted him, hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for thinking of me with those seats. It appears that they were given to another one of our firm's clients. He texted back right away, in all caps, are you shitting me? and then pretend I never told you. Let me handle. He followed up with me about formulating a plan. A few days later, we were asked to come down for a meeting in their office. The client requested the partner be present. Not entirely. Unusual. So Dickhead Partner and I hopped a flight the next week and headed over to their office. Little did Dickhead Partner know. My client had orchestrated a wonderfully awkward little show to catch him red-handed. When we entered the conference room, it was all the usual suspects, along with a woman in her 30s we didn't recognize. My client immediately introduces Dick Head Partner. This is Stephanie Such and Suck, VP from other department. She wanted to sit in on this meeting. Hey up, you guys must already know her from the Super Bowl. She then responds as she goes to shake my hand. Oh, I don't think so. Did we meet there? I'm sorry if I forgot. Client responds, G Steph, how much did you have to drink? They were sitting right next to you. Client looks at me, and I say, sorry client, I wasn't there. Are you thinking of someone else? Double quotes dot dot at this point, the head partner is looking visibly uncomfortable, probably trying to come up with an excuse. He starts in with an um, when Stephanie says over him no, so and so from other company were in the other seats. By the way, I was wondering why we gave company seats to those guys. Is there a project we're working with them on that I don't know about? Obviously not. They were in completely different industries. It would be like Coca-Cola partnering with John Deere. Dick Head Partner lets out an again, and the client immediately speaks over him asking Dick Head Partner, I gave you those tickets for op. At this point Dick Head Partner is turning bright red. He responds oh, uh, well he wasn't able to make it, so he must have given the seats away to someone else, and turns to me looking for me to cover for him. Client smirks at me. I respond uh, what are you talking about? Client, you gave me tickets to the Super Bowl. Client suddenly raises his voice to head partner. Those tickets were a personal thank you gift from me to op. Did you give them away to someone else? Pause was it another client? Dick head partner butts in with oh, um, maybe something got mixed up in the office. Client went quiet for what probably seemed like an eternity to Dick head partner. He then looked down, grabbed his portfolio and iPad put them into his briefcase, and said I think this meeting is over. Up it seems as if I owe you a thank you gift. Let's go to lunch. Stephanie, you're welcome to join, Dick Head Partner. I need to evaluate our relationship. Please go back home and expect to hear from us next week. Dick Head Partner suggests he would like to join, presumably to do damage control. And Stephanie sternly tells him I don't think that's a good idea, and asks the front desk to see Dick Head Partner out. As soon as he is in the elevator, we all break out laughing hysterically. Stephanie wasn't really a VP, just an employee at the company who client had drafted into helping with his pre-planned meeting skit. 
but she did end up coming to lunch with us and was a fellow Niners fan in total blast to hang out with. On our way to the restaurant, I got a desperate text from Dick head partner saying I needed to cover for the firm and that we could discuss things when I got back. I replied yes, we need to talk, but I'll see what I can do. Client told me to wait a couple hours and then respond to him one. To expect invoices for the resale value of the Super Bowl tickets resale is way above face value. It was over $10,000 as well as our lunch he picked a pricey spot and made a big show of overspending and that he expected them to be paid immediately. Two expected I be given a direct apology. Three expected a written apology to his company for what he considered theft and for he will only interact with me or another one of our firm's partners. Never dickhead partner. This whole thing caused a stir with the other partners, and I actually came off looking great, because it appeared that I had made a good faith effort to save the client for the firm despite being the victim in this situation. The client would transfer to another partner, which meant the head partner lost his profit share on any work with them. Oh! And the other partners in the firm made the head partner pay the invoices back out of his salary dot 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 in retrospect. I really have no idea what the hell the guy was thinking. Did he seriously believe the client would just not notice me not thanking him for Super Bowl tickets? Anyway, the well was kind of poison for me there long term because Dick head partner wasn't going anywhere. I left the firm a few months later for a much better position. Client ultimately terminated their relationship with that firm a year later. He actually now works with a good good Ray. Friend of mine at a competing firm. I'm still pissed I missed out on the Super Bowl even though we lost. Hoping we make it back this year so I can finally go to one in person. Go Niners. Stiff me on overtime. Cue the long, expensive, revenge. This happened in the early 2000s when I joined a startup. We agreed on a salary and no paid overtime and an evaluation in three months and then annually. Standard stuff mostly. It was a very mediocre salary for the work, but I really liked work itself, which was extremely interesting and challenging. For me, even if the finances were so so I felt I'd learn a lot of skills which would be useful in the future. After three years and having 10 decent clients and a bunch of clients trialing and money rolling in, the talk turned to back pay and paid overtime plus compensating for past overtime. At that point, around $50,000 in OT had been accrued, which is a lot. Legally it couldn't be back pay, so the talk was always of a discretionary bonus. Now at this point, everyone is okay with this, myself included. And this was discussed in writing, via company emails too, so I felt secure and that no bad will was in play. I felt the company should be able to afford the payment. Equally I'd happily settle for equity at a discount which is legally possible there if cash flow was an issue. The discussions about back pay, possible equity, and now started to drag on and I was getting irked by this. In the end, I was made an offer of equity which meant the company valuation was far beyond anything reasonable in the hundreds of millions, and I'd get a minuscule stake less than 0.01% of a company with 9 employees and a projected annual turnover of around 2 million. It was a FU of sorts to stiff me out of money and I didn't want to take that lying down. To say I was furious was an understatement. Anyway, the day he made that offer I handed in my resignation. This sent the CTO into panic mode because the CEO had refused an updated contract and I was still on a one month notice period. Plus I had a lot of untaken paid leave. Basically it meant I was walking out right then and there. So, off I went that very same day, to the shock and surprise of everyone, I guess. The next day I sent an official, registered, letter requesting my overtime back pay and received a negative response, which I followed up with another, detailed, demand. This was also rejected because the bonus was discretionary and there is no overtime. However, I'd been seeking legal advice and I understood that they don't have a leg to stand on if I am willing to pay for an attorney. As the liability in such matters is firmly and 100% on the employer. I was willing. You need to understand that going to a lawyer was very rare in those parts back then, so companies didn't generally expect this outcome. Things have since changed. When going through the applicable laws with the attorney, I noticed there's a limitation of seven years. So, while my attorney was laying out what to do in order to get me my money in a little as a few weeks, I just asked him what if we wait until it's six years and 11 months after the transgression and then file, demanding interest. I wanted this because the law stated that back pay is due at a 9% APR above the base rate 3, 25 at that time. Accrued daily, for every day past the due date, we're looking at 12, 12, 5 compound daily APR. The risk is that the company folds in that time. But I decided to take that risk. 
I sent one final letter stating that I expect all the owed and accrued amounts to date to be paid. Immediately. Of course, nothing happened. For the next few years life rolled on. The company did grow and become a known player in the area. When the time came, I found an attorney and started the case. We had copies of all the communications, copies of the registered letters and responses. The back pay demanded now, including interest, was $112,000. What I didn't know was that in addition to this that there are fixed penalties for each instruction to perform uncompensated over time. The total demand was something like $135,000. To say that, the CEO, who is still CEO, lost his tea would be an understatement. I got a very verbally abusive phone call which I dutifully recorded as it wasn't completely unexpected and was added to the filing. The CEO fought or tried to, but when the judge heard the phone call, he took an immediate dim view. Reading through all the communication just put more nails in the defense's coffin. The judge just ruled and instructed the company to pay immediately and without delay and also ordered the company to pay all my legal costs. They also got a full audit from the Department of Labor. The company paid up a week later. To add insult to injury, the evening of the court's decision, the CEO apparently got very drunk and crashed his car into another vehicle while drunk. He got a DUI conviction and lost his driving license for half a year, and his insurance refused to pay out for the damages to his vehicle brand new Mercedes S Class as he was drunk. All in all, a glorious day.